Basketball players, stop training like power lifters. We're gonna give you the 10 best exercises that you can use to turn into a basketball freak, and we're gonna start, right? So whether you're playing in the G League, the NBA, the NCAA, you're playing high school basketball, maybe you're even in a rec league, no matter where you're playing, basketball needs an explosive first step. We've gotta be able to have high levels of power output bilaterally, unilaterally. We have to be able to contort in air and do this for over 60 minutes. So we have to be extremely explosive, we have to have endurance, and we have to be explosive unilaterally and bilaterally. So how do you develop that elasticity and explosiveness while jumping? How do you limit your body from getting fatigued so that it prevents you from crossing over your opponents and getting to the hoop? A quick answer is getting to the fold as quickly as possible. I was fortunate enough to listen to Al Vermeil. He was the strength coach for the Chicago Bulls when they won six straight world titles. And he would talk often about triple flexion, catching a clean, dropping into a jump, doing things in that compressed position is really, really important. But ideally that leads to building more athletic muscle, being able to coordinate in different positions, being able to do things like technical coordination, plyometric work, reflexive work, all these things matter, but also even doing this with our upper body. We need to be able to develop neural pathways that improve our overall signaling through afferent and efferent signaling. We have to be ready for variable speeds and variable joint angles. That's gonna bring in the discussion around blast impulse, sustained impulse. We need to apply a very large amount of force, in most cases, in a very short period of time. That's what impulse means. And that's gonna factor into overall power output. And these are strength characteristics that we have to master when we're dealing with basketball players. Different levels of speed, different joint angles, and overall how that's going to apply to the actual sport. So the garage strength system of periodization is based off of parabolic periodization. And what we wanna focus on in that first key exercise is producing a large amount of force in a short period of time. Okay, and so that's gonna be based off of technical coordination. For basketball players, that could be a two box snatch, it could be a, a high hang power clean, but now we're gonna go into that first key exercise that you could use on an upper body day or on a lower body day. So let's say we're 12 weeks out from the season. A great movement that we can do is going to be a power jerk with these sweet ZKC plates, link down the bio. Now, if I wanna do a power jerk, okay, think about this, I wanna do a counter movement, I'm here, I'm gonna fold, I'm compressing, boom. Okay, so I'm here, and then I'm gonna drive back up. Don't mind my right elbow, I can't lock out. But the big factor here is that we want to learn how to be elastic and how to coordinate our legs with our upper body at high speeds. And then we wanna feel that dynamic trunk control. So I'm gonna be here, trying to reestablish my grip. There we go, here, dip, boom, okay? So we could do four sets of four or five sets of three to learn how to be more explosive, to learn how to be more elastic. And typically this is gonna be done on day two and we're gonna do this with about a minute to a minute and a half rest. So technical coordination exercises are fantastic for teaching a basketball player how to drive, how to grab, how to leap, how to compress. But how can we actually get stronger so that we can continuously improve those positions and lead to better performance. Basketball players are routinely asked to jump off of one leg and to deal with a physical opponent who's banging. They have to create some trunk control on the court to be able to get into a better position. That's where this next exercise is gonna come into play. We're gonna use a single leg squat. So if we sat here, this is something that would be done on the leg power day, okay? So we're here. You can use this, and this is a great leg strengthening movement for taller individuals, for basketball players. We're here. And we're gonna do that unbroken. And we're gonna do that unbroken for five sets of three on each leg. Typically, I would say, try to rest for about a minute and a half. If you wanna get creative, you could throw in a crazy rotational movement, like a side medicine ball throw or a rotational jump lunge, but that's not even gonna be part of this video. Just use that and keep that in your back pocket if you wanna get a little bit more creative. Now, the next absolute strength exercise is gonna help you when you're trying to be more physical with your opponent, when you're trying to actually grab, bang, get those strong shoulders, be more stable overhead. And that's gonna be a simple 
military press. And a lot of basketball players are always worried that, well, if I build my shoulders too much, I'm gonna miss my shots. That's not the case. Get that out of your head, okay? If you're doing resistance-based training, and in this case, dumbbell military press done on an upper body day during the absolute strength period, and you're doing five sets of seven to nine. If you're still playing basketball consistently, you're still getting good shots, you can get more swole shoulders and still be skilled out on the court. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you develop strength. I would recommend after dumbbell military press, rest about a minute and a half to two minutes. I'm still concerned that lifting weights is gonna make me big and bulky. Yes, the potential's there if you're training like a power lifter or a massive bodybuilder like Jay Cutler, but just look at the Greek freak. Look what happened when he started to pack on more weight and what happened to his play. And that's why we're bringing on day three, the athlete day. So as you gain muscle mass, we need to make sure that it continues to coordinate at really, really high speeds. We need to use things like plyometrics so that we can really hone in on our skill to jump off of one leg, to jump off of two legs, and in turn, open up that court and that attack even further. Plyometric exercises are key under that skilled strength umbrella, which is why you'll find these next couple of movements inside of our app, Peak Strength. Pogo jumps are gonna be the next key exercise, okay? And we wanna do these to a target. Now, I'm gonna use this as an example. It's not that high, I think it's around nine feet. I could do a pogo jump just like this. Okay, here, touch, touch. And I wanna be reactive. I wanna react very quickly, okay? And I would recommend every other set you would touch with the same hand. So if I'm doing six sets of three, the first set I'm touching with my right. The second set I'm touching with my left. We wanna get really good at favoring each side, okay? If you can do that, that opens up your offensive attack and your defensive capability. Another thing that you can do to make this even more advantageous is to do a pogo jump, and we're gonna use our power elastic band here, okay? And I'm gonna actually do this with just a little bit more resistance around my shoulder. So I'm still working towards that touch point. The target is gonna make this a lot more effective, okay? So we're here, boom, touch, boom, touch, boom, touch, boom, touch. We wanna react as quickly as possible, and this little extra load from the band is gonna force us into that fold that we talked about earlier to react a little bit quicker. We've designed peak strength so that every single sport program has a layout of exercises, reps, sets, periodization built towards your specific sport. So if you go inside of peak strength, you can select that you want a basketball program, and if you put in your peak date and even the equipment that you have available, it'll give you that custom program. Now we gave you that pogo jump, which is a bilateral plyometric movement. To train unilaterally, we can actually do a rotational jump lunge here. Okay, so we're rotating and we're changing the speed. We're changing the joint angles when we're landing. And if I'm doing this for five sets of three on each side, I'm gonna be resting about a minute to a minute and a half. One thing we can start to think about is in basketball, there's often times that we have our hands overhead. There's often times that we're holding an object that's round. Let's think about what we can do now to make this a little bit more sports specific. We can grab a nice, easy medicine ball. It only has to be 10, 12 pounds, maybe eight pounds if you're a little bit lighter. And we can hold this in a position, as I just hit my hat, we can hold this in a position while we're doing those jumps. That's gonna create a little bit greater dynamic trunk control. And again, this is gonna be done on day three. So we're here, boom, 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 boom. And we wanna react quickly be as elastic as possible. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you can pick up Peak Strength for free for seven days of training. And if you don't like it, all you have to do is cancel it before that seven free days of training is up. The worst thing that you can do right now is nothing. So how can we get those bigger shoulders and still be explosive, still be elastic, still have touch on that shot or that pass. And this is where we wanna look at hypertrophic movements. Okay, so when we're thinking about hypertrophic movements, we're gonna be using compound exercises that have a little bit more time under tension, maybe a slower eccentric. All of those things will come into play, but I like to pair them. If I'm dealing with a basketball player, I like to pair those movements with some type of plyometric or some type of reflexive work. Okay, so in this case, this would be done possibly on day five of your program. Could also be done on day two, but we're gonna give you a neutral grip pull-up. And we're gonna do that 
explosively. So I'll demonstrate here and then we're gonna pair this with another exercise. So we're gonna do five sets of five neutral grip pull-ups right here, okay, here, boom. And we wanna explode on the way up, explode, boom, on the way up and squeeze, okay? Be a freaking athlete. I'm so sick of seeing basketball players who can barely do pull-ups. Boom, up, oh yeah, one more. Boom, and then come down nice and controlled. Okay, now we're gonna pair that with an explosive push-up. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna rest for about 30 to 45 seconds. While we're during that rest period, try to minimize clowning around, try to focus on what the task is at hand. We wanna produce a ton of force in a very short period of time. And I'm trying to talk right now because there's a beeping and it's really annoying me. So we rest for 30 seconds after we hit those neutral grip pull-ups. Now we're gonna come over here, and this could be anywhere from 10 inches to 16 inches. Somewhere along those lines, I'm here, I'm gonna drop, boom. One more. Now, if you struggle with being explosive on a pull-up, just hit that for four to six reps. If you can't do an explosive push-up to the box, just do a clap push-up or just do a push-up in general, and then eventually you will get to that point. So what I wanna see though, is you hit that for five. Remember we said five sets of five. You're gonna rest 30 seconds. You'll come over here, you'll hit the push-ups, then we're gonna rest about two minutes. This is gonna be done on day five. Typically, sometimes this could be done on day two that upper body power day. Okay, the next two movements are freaking sweet. And remember, when we're going through all these different exercises, in the beginning, we did talk about like a high hang power snatch, a high hang clean. You could do those if you're going back over everything. You could do those for five doubles, five triples. Then we talked about the power jerks. After the power jerks, we went into the single leg squats. Okay, after the single leg squats, we got into the, the dumbbell military press. Then we talked about the pogo jumps, the alternating jump lunges, and then we got into the neutral grip pull-ups with those explosive push-ups. And now these two exercises are gonna be fantastic at taking that bigger muscle, stronger muscle, more athletic muscle, and making it even more elastic, making it a little bit twitchier. Okay, that's a big factor here. So this first one is going to be a Euro step drill, okay? And so what we wanna look at is actually just setting up, there's a target, there's two targets here. We can have an object, all right? So I can have a plate or an easy medicine ball. And I'm gonna step through this and I just wanna go jump, here, hold. And I wanna cross and hold, okay? Squeeze through the trunk. So I'm here, boom, boom. Okay, and try to get that ingrained in your nervous system. This is a step series that you can start to master. And then when you're on the court, because this is so normal, it's such an effective thing on the court to attack someone offensively. Now you get so quick at this to both sides that it improves your game. So if I'm doing this to my right side, this can be, bear with me here. I got to think through this. And that's the other factor. When we're talking about reflexive movements, it's more challenging to that mind muscle action but it's gonna help you be more coordinated. Okay, so we're here, boom, boom, hold. Okay, boom, boom, hold. Now, if I'm very, very athletic and I can smash the Euro step with that light plate or with that light med ball, I can grab a little bit heavier plate and I can go here, boom, boom. Okay, and we wanna control that landing. Okay, here, boom, boom. And we wanna see minimal twisting. And you'll even start to feel that in your abs. What happens then is that as you're planting on takeoff, if you're jumping for a layup or whatever, or if you're cutting more effectively, you're gonna feel your abs actually being used. That is the dynamic trunk control that we talked about earlier. Now, one exercise that you're gonna see inside peak strength is gonna be stair jumps. This is a movement that is absolutely phenomenal for bigger individuals. Men and women that play basketball tend to be taller. They tend to be bigger. They tend to have knee problems because they're out on the hardwood all of the time. They have to master all these different jumps and they have to have really good endurance. So they might have knee problems, might have ankle issues. But the big factor behind the stair jumps is it's a little bit less of a load while they're learning that cyclical jump so that they can eventually look like Vince Carter back in 2000. So we're gonna do that stair jump here. I'm gonna demonstrate and hopefully I don't look like a total fool with my mic falling down, and we wanna show that repetitive jump. So we're here, boom, 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 okay? And you can go through that 
five sets of two times up, three quick jumps, boom, boom, boom. Okay, I was a little slow on my reaction, but over time, this should get a little bit faster. This will be done on athlete day, or it could be done on impulse day. And we're gonna hit the Euro step, five sets of two to each side. Rest about 60 seconds, because it is complicated. Your nervous system needs a little bit of time to recover. And you can walk over to the stair jumps, five sets, with two repetitions. Two repetitions would be three quick jumps. Then you're gonna rest about two and a half minutes and you would go back to that Euro step. So use each of these exercises to try to improve your overall play, to try to get a little bit more athletic muscle, okay? We wanna build size. We wanna build elasticity. We wanna learn that availability of compression. Okay, we wanna learn how to handle all those things. We wanna be reflexive at the same time. We wanna be explosive. All of those factors come into play. And if you don't know how to program them properly, you're not gonna get the best benefit. That's exactly why you should use Peak Strength because Peak Strength was built to help specifically solve all of those issues that you might have as a basketball player. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you guys wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.